Chloe was nine years old and a healthy child when she got diagnosed with the flu. And last year, she did not get the flu shot in time. Emily was my first girl. She was three and a half, just super healthy, super active. Billy was 13 years old and was a little sick, so we took him to the doctor, and the doctor did the test and said, yes, he has the flu. She got sick. She was at the doctor the next day. They did a test and said she has the flu. I never thought it was going to be as bad later on as, as it was. About 4.30 in the morning, he could not breathe. That's a panic moment. Like that's When you can't breathe, that was like the biggest thing for me. That's the only thing I could focus on. I grabbed him and drove to the closest hospital. That Sunday, we were up with her and she just seemed like she got sicker. So in the morning, we're like, okay, the minute that doctor's office opens, we're gonna call. We called and they said, bring her in. I think, I can't remember the exact time, but we will squeeze her in like 11.30 or 12. I gave her a shower uh, and, and cleaned her up, put her in pajamas and, and put her in the bed watching cartoons. and. You were kind of getting ready and doing yeah, different things I was like laundry. Getting dressed and yeah. came back up. And then and I. She was I, just laying there. I mean, it was very clear that, you know, something was wrong. And, you know, I, I kind of said Emily and then I screamed for Joe. And uh, basically, we grabbed the phone. You were coming up. I called 911. Joe started giving CPR. At about two in the morning, she said she couldn't breathe. I don't think it took two or three minutes, um, I called 911 and they said, we'll be there in 15 minutes, and I, I knew I didn't have that time. We knew something was bad. We're just complete disbelief, this is the flu. Mm -hmm. And um, your, your son's in there, Billy's in there dying from it. This all um, just happened so quickly and turned our whole world upside down from getting off the school bus to in the hospital in a coma that quick. I remember that. They mm -hmm. just they said, I'm sorry, but we're going to have to put your son in a drug-induced coma so he can fight this. You know, come talk to him. Mm -hmm. I got in touch with Micah. He came to the hospital. The whole day was a whirlwind. I remember the pressure mask thing wasn't helping. I saw a tear in her eyes, so I went back and I just went like that. And I just told her it was going to be okay. I don't know what happened. She just, she couldn't take it anymore. And she called me to talk to me and pulled my hair. I had a necklace and she grabbed it and I got really scared and I thought that was it. Your fears are kind of hitting you and you think the worst, you know, as a parent. You're just like, am I ever going to talk to my child again? They told us right away, this is a very, very sick, you know, little girl. And they're like, there's no brain activity and, and we just said, you know, we just want to go and be, be with her. And so we, they, you know, we basically said goodbye, you know. When you, well, when they're telling you this, you kind of feel like it was so, it was so surreal. We drove home without her, um, which is very weird. And um, we had to bury her. We had to adjust to life without her. The next two months, it was every day he's fighting for his life. And they would start off every morning and say, look, Billy is the sickest kid in this hospital. And they were preparing us for the worst. I remember uh, him opening his eyes the first time. And he couldn't talk because he still had the ventilator. And, um, you know, we weren't sure. he would even be uh, mentally okay. I whispered, I love you, in his ear, and he mouthed, I love you back. Your children are born, and you envision, you know, this 10 years, 20 years. You know, we had we a lot of plans. 
and then all of a sudden it just stops. Then you don't have a past and you don't have a future and you don't have a present with them. I could never imagine her getting that sick that quick. You don't ever think the flu is gonna get to the point where you're gonna lose a child over the flu. I know friends that have had the flu, but they just stayed at home. The flu before, I never thought of it as being serious. I thought like, oh, you get it, you stay home for a week, you miss school, like you'd be all happy about that. But after I got it, I realized how much more serious it became, like how it could actually affect you, and how it could actually start, I guess, for, to be blunt, like to kill you. A normal flu happens to a bunch of people all the time, but you never know if you're gonna be the one who's gonna really get hurt by it. My daughter isn't here, okay? I had to put her in a box and bury her. Everyone has access to hear what can happen, and the vaccines are, they are effective. Why not get a flu shot? Like, why would you put yourself at risk? I don't think the flu is something that you wanna mess with or take lightly. Prevent what's preventable. Get vaccinated for influenza. Protege tu familia. Ponte la vacuna contra la gripe. Please, get your flu shot.